Hi there everyone! Welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Roundup. This episode is a special one given that we're celebrating Data Literacy Month here at DataCamp. Definitely take a look at our social media channels and blog to keep up with all of the fascinating data literacy stories, information, memes and news coming your way this month. This week's news takes a look at how AI could help improve carbon dating, the new NFL quarterback passing score, and how facial recognition for turtles could help conservation in Africa. Make sure you're subscribed and don't forget to let us know which story you're enjoying the most this week. In our first story this week, we'll take a look at the state of the text-to-video playing field and see whether we can expect a text-to-image successor anytime soon. Given how rapidly AI text-to-image applications are becoming mainstream, it's no surprise that people are thinking about what comes next. For most of us, this means that we're looking towards text-to-video as the next big AI content generation step. The biggest hurdle for text-to-video is the exponentially higher computational cost. Given the already unimaginably large datasets used to train image models, the idea of training video models from scratch has researchers and innovators looking for other options. Patrick Esser, a researcher at Runway, recently announced on Twitter that text-to-video would soon be coming to the Runway platform, using Stable Diffusion, an image-based AI with a heavy focus on efficiency. Similarly, DeepMind has announced Transframer, a new model that uses a probability-based model to generate 30-second clips using an existing image. Other software like Microsoft's newer Infinity and CogView are also constantly being updated and refined, so there's certainly much work going into the text-to-video space. Are you excited about the future of AI-generated content? Let us know in the comments. Our next story takes a look at how DeepMind's total facial recognition might help conservation efforts across Africa. Biologists consider turtles to be an indicator species. These are classes of organisms whose behavior help scientists understand the underlying welfare of their ecosystem. For example, the presence of otters in rivers has been considered a sign of a clean, healthy river. Traditionally, individual turtles have been identified and tracked by biologists with physical tags, but frequent loss or erosion of these tags in seawater has made this an unreliable method. To solve this problem, DeepMind partnered with Zindi, a community of conservation data scientists, to host a competition called Turtle Recall, in which competitors were tasked with downloading the challenge data and training models to predict a turtle's identity as accurately as possible given a photograph taken from a specific angle. According to DeepMind, the level of prediction accuracy in the submissions was immediately useful for identifying turtles in the field, meaning that these models can have a real and immediate impact on wildlife conservation. We love hearing about how interesting applications of data science can help the world around us. In our next story, AI could help archaeologists to improve the accuracy of radiocarbon dating, giving us new insights into the lives and behaviors of ancient humans. In a new study published in Cell Reports Methods, a research team has developed a dating method that uses artificial intelligence to date genomes via their DNA. The method is called temporal population structure and can be used to date genomes that are up to 10,000 years old. Eran al Haik, one of the researchers on the team, says, We show that information about the period in which people lived is encoded in the genetic material. By figuring out how to interpret it and position it in time, we manage to date it with the help of AI. The researchers don't expect TPS to eliminate radiocarbon dating, but rather see it as a method that is a complementary tool in the paleogeographic toolbox. The method can be used when there is uncertainty involving a radiocarbon dating result, such as the famous human skull from the Czech Republic, which could be anywhere between 15,000 and 34,000 years old. This is a great example of AI complementing existing practices and methods, and we can't wait to see what exciting new information it might reveal. In our final story this week, data scientist Elena Ehrlich worked with the NFL to develop a metric for evaluating the passes of quarterbacks in the league. While many quarterback ratings already exist, the league wanted a metric to specifically rate passing performance. A meaningful passing metric had to extend beyond passing yards, touchdowns, and interceptions to reflect the decision-making and pass execution given the game clock and pressure. After working extensively on time series, Ehrlich was able to develop a method that can place a quarterback's performance within the context of expected performance across the league. This method makes use of the spliced bin Pareto distribution, and those of you who are interested can find the PyTorch code for the score calculation in the description below. Being able to assess how quarterbacks perform under specific game circumstances will be really useful for both scouts and sports stats fans alike. And we can't wait to see the results of this new measure out on the field. That's it for another roundup. Thanks for watching. We'll see you same time, same place next week.